Good evening, this is woodblock printmaker David Ball. I'm an English-born Canadian who has been living and working in Japan now for 30 years. I'm speaking to you from my carving bench. It's located in our shop in the Asakusa district of Tokyo. You know, the place with the big red lanterns and the famous Sensoji temple. I've been making videos of our printmaking work for a long time, and we now have dozens of them on YouTube. But this episode is going to be the first one in a new series. And because it's a bit of a special project, we've opened up a separate YouTube channel for this. Over the past few months, since I finished the series showing the production of our version of the famous Hokusai Great Wave Print, quite a number of people have written to me, or even asked me directly here in the shop, what I myself will be taking on for my next project, and of course, videoing along the way. I've been thinking quite seriously about this over the past few months, and I think I've decided what to do. There's a particular project that I've had in mind here for quite a few years, but because it is in some senses a bit of a difficult thing to undertake, I've held back. But I've bounced the idea recently off a number of visitors to our shop here, and pretty much without exception, these people have suggested I should just go ahead and do this. The difficulty that I mentioned wouldn't bother them at all. And quite the opposite, they would be hugely interested in watching the process. So what's that difficulty about? Uh, well, late last year there was a rather interesting exhibition held here in Tokyo, an exhibition of the genre of woodblock prints known as shunga, which translates basically as spring pictures. Spring in this sense is a euphemistic term for love, so the word shunga represents what we might call erotic art in English. It's one such image that I've been thinking about for making my next project, and by this point in the discussion I suspect many of the viewers know the image I might have in mind. And that brings me to the issue that's going to cause difficulties for me in creating a video presentation of making this print. YouTube, at least my part of it, my channel, is a family-friendly environment. And even though I myself, along with many of our fans, have no problem with the content of the image that I have in mind, I understand that there's people out there who do not wish to view erotic art of any kind. Or even if they do, they might not want other people, family members, children, or a work environment, whatever, to be exposed to it. So what we've done is we've created this separate place for our new project. Our main YouTube channel will remain completely safe for work, as the expression goes, but over here on this channel we will be showing images of this and perhaps other similar prints. It's not going to be in your face all the time. I mean, the emphasis here is going to be on the production of the print, how I'm going to be making it. And that's easily going to be shown through general descriptions, and or distant clips, and then, you know, pictures of the actual work, which may not show the whole image. Anyway, for those of you who are now still with me on this project, who haven't bailed out by now, <laughs> let's get to it. I hinted at the image content a minute ago, but I should now clarify which print we are talking about. You've perhaps seen it featured in the recent Mad Men TV series, where they used a framed enlargement. But the original creation by Hokusai was as a small two-page book illustration. Now, small it may have been, but it certainly packed a punch. This is one of those images that you can remember when you first saw it. It has that much power. When you think about it, for most artists, you know, to create one image, Hokusai did, to create an image that, that captures the world's imagination and lives down the ages for each new generation to discover a new would be enough. But Hokusai did it more than once. The book was published in a three-volume set with a couple of dozen pages in each volume. The illustrations were double-page spreads, as we saw in the image a moment ago, each one combined with text nominally spoken by the participants of each picture. And I think, as is the case with much modern material in the erotic genre, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of connecting plot. The images are the important thing, clearly. I myself don't own an original book. They're too expensive for a little printmaker like me. But I have a young friend who is a print dealer here in Tokyo, and who had one a few years back. And at that time, thinking towards the future to this project, I asked him if I could borrow it for a while. I took some high-resolution scans of the image in question, and he agreed to let me do that. And that scan will be the starting point for the new reproduction we are going to start to make today. But that's enough preparation. This series of videos isn't intended to be a historical lecture. We're going to watch a print being made. So let's get started on the actual process of making this thing. With the high quality scan in hand, I had to make the first in a number of decisions. The original, as you saw, was a double page book spread. The left and right hands were actually carved and printed on separate wood blocks. They only came together at the binding stage. I'll be publishing my version as a single image, something like this. So I stitch the two parts together in photo editing software. What size should I make it? The original is really fairly small, smaller even than this copy. 
that Mad Men version we saw in the TV clip was too large, and a woodblock print of that size would be way, way too expensive to produce, and too expensive for most of our collectors. So we're going to make it in an in-between size. I haven't actually got a scaled up copy yet. It'll be something just a little bit bigger than this one, I think. With the preparation done, my next few weeks of work is laid out for me. It's simple in concept. I have to go over every millimeter of the image, tracing all the lines that need to be carved on the key block, the block from which the outlines of the image will be printed. It's simple in concept, but very difficult in execution. I've already started using a wonderful new tool I have here. Let's take a look over my shoulder as I do a bit more. Okay, this first example is how I used to do this. I'm working with a Wacom pen tablet looking up at my iMac monitor. This is a screen capture. It's pretty pixelated. I've enlarged it here for this video. And you can see I'm coloring with a red transparent color here going over what are the black lines of the original key block. After getting it where I think it's pretty close, I then click to activate a white solid layer that's between the red and the underlying image. That lets me see clearly what the red, the new red layer looks like, and I can touch up as I'm doing here, add a bit, get the lines cleaned up a bit. I've just switched to an eraser there, taking some off that line. Then switch back to a brush, color in a little bit, and just generally clean it up. And this is the new system. It's an iPad Pro, of course, with a new Apple Pencil. And the concept is the same. I've got the image on one layer, a white solid opaque layer turned off at the moment here, just above that. And then I'm tracing on a 50% transparent layer above that. Here we go. This is putting the white layer in to allow me to see what I've done clearly. Fill in between those outlines. And as necessary, switch back and forth between the brush and the eraser to clean it up to the shape I want. This is brushing, I think. Yeah, here we go. Here's the eraser now. Clean off a bit. Fix some of those points. A bit more brush taste. Look at that. This tracing is a huge amount of work, of course, but there's a real plus side to it as well, you know. I'm going over every single line in this image, very carefully, very slowly, drawing it and studying it. By the time I get to the carving in a couple of weeks, I know this thing inside out. I know the feel of the original brush strokes, the taste of the whole thing. It's a real head start for me to have done this step first. So there we have it. That'll do for this first episode, an introduction to the project and a first glimpse of the work. In subsequent episodes over the coming months, we'll work through the entire process, finishing this tracing, pasting it down onto a piece of wood, carving the key block, doing color separations, carving the color blocks, getting busy on the printing. Just how long it will all take, I really shouldn't predict. That great wave, which I thought would take a couple of months, ended up taking me a year. This won't take that long, but there are so many things going on around me in the shop here. I just can't give you an exact estimate on this. But you know what they say, you know, good cooking takes time. I hope you stay with me on this, and I'll see you in the next episode fairly soon, I think. Thank you very much for your interest.